So, I saw the first Boss Baby movie, and I really enjoyed it. It's got my favorite Alec Baldwin persona coupled with an adorable baby. Such great gifts. I don't remember the first film that well, but I think it certainly stayed in the pop culture consciousness. And I was excited about the sequel. But I didn't love the first Boss Baby so much that I went and watched the animated series over on Netflix, which I am shocked to learn was on for four seasons. And the reason I now know this is because I was like, man, I think a lot of this sequel is based on the animated series. So how successful was that? And like, did, and I was trying to verify, again, because I don't remember the first film that well, where these things happened. I was like, did I forget that Wizzy lost an arm or did it happen on the show? I'm pretty sure it happened on the show. Where, was Wizzy a main character? Because I like Wizzy a lot. Which episodes were those? I don't want to watch four seasons of The Boss Baby, but I'd watch some more Wizzy. And when did Lam Lam become so important to the story? And also there was a lot of like, drama between Ted and Tim that I felt happened on the series that I therefore left, felt left out of. It just, I really felt left out. I guess that's a good way for me to describe how I felt watching this movie. I felt like, like I was catching up and I never could catch up. So I don't know why they would make it that you had to watch the animated series to get the, to get the sequel. It's weird to me, really a weird choice. I mean, unless the Boss Baby animated a series audience is like huge, but I still, I still wouldn't have done that. Also, another problem I had with this film at the beginning is that it seems when it gets started like another Hollywood movie where in an effort to raise up female characters, which is so important, but unfortunately it therefore then puts down male characters. I don't know why Hollywood feels or and when a, a number of groups feel they have to do this. It's important to, that the ideal is to celebrate all, everyone, all of us, right? Now of course a movie not a movie can't celebrate everybody, but you know, I think that the, this movie could have made a little bit more of an effort to balance it out. We switched to two daughters and Tim's wife is literally the breadwinner and I'm sure the movie thought that was very clever, but uh I was like, I wouldn't have made that joke. I, I don't think that's gonna sit well with a lot of people. But once you get past the beginning of the film, it's actually a pretty interesting exploration of beta male versus alpha male adult men. I like that a lot. Fatherhood, I called my dad after watching this movie. I called my dad! That's how I felt about it. I thought that was really great. And then also, Brotherhood, that stuff was so sweet. Oh, I really liked that. Boss Baby's head is so cute. I just wanna touch it and smell it, it's so cute. They really do capture, and Boss Baby for some reason is the only, it's a whole movie of babies, but only Boss Baby feel, you know, Ted, the original Boss Baby, feels like an actual baby. It's fantastic. However, unfortunately, Boss Baby 2 doesn't feel that that exploration of you know, beta male versus alpha male and fatherhood and brotherhood is enough. So they cram in a bunch of other stuff that dilutes Tim and Ted's story to the point that it's another reason that it's hard to tell what the heck is going on often when you're watching the movie. You're like, what? Then also Amy, like, you're like, what are we doing here? Then also Amy Sedaris, while certainly talented, although never as successful as Alec Baldwin, so that should have been a hint to the people who made this that her character wouldn't go over as well, but she's just not a good female equivalent to Alec Baldwin. You know, she's supposed to be the female version of that character, although actually not, which I had a bit of a problem with, and I'll talk about that in a moment, but she just isn't as, she doesn't, just doesn't connect to the way that Alec Baldwin does. And then also, the character design for Tina isn't as compelling either. They keep calling her a baby, but I'm like, I think she's a little older than a baby. She has a lot of hair for a baby. She just doesn't have the same cute factor. Uh, I also didn't appreciate the depiction of women in business as more in touch with their feelings and not as ruthless or as cool as the original Boss Baby. Women can be like Jack Donaghy too, thank you very much. And so that was disappointing to me. I think Julia Louis-Dreyfus or Wendy Malick uh, as, the, as the female boss baby, or even Jean Smart, who's currently killing it in Hacks as a similar character. I think that that would have helped this movie a lot and with a better character design. Uh, the rest of the voice cast is excellent though. James Marston is a great Tim. He has, he, he's asked to do a lot. He does it really well. And Ariana Greenblatt does a wonderful job as his daughter. And she also sings that her voice was, was um, well, you'll see. 
Uh, Jeff Goldblum and Lisa Kudrow, and Kudrow's role is very small, by the way, but they're both fantastic. Great comedic timing, especially Lisa Kudrow. It's like she really is a comedic genius. She doesn't get enough work. But maybe, you know, their voices are so recognizable, it's a bit distracting, and I think Lisa Kudrow might suffer from just forever being thought of as Phoebe Buffay. Uh, but that's fine. They made so much money. I mean, David Schwimmer has the same complaint. He's like, everyone always just sees Ross. And I'm like, you made so much money off of that show. It's fine. Uh, and also, he's kind of become a director, and he's gotten some good acting work recently. Uh, I, liked, I like everybody on Friends. I rediscovered Friends during the pandemic. We're on a tangent. Back to the Boss Baby 2. All right, and then, of course, Alec Baldwin in what has become his signature style role, paired with, as I said, perfect character design. The animation gods were truly smiling down on DreamWorks Animation when they created Boss Baby back, well, it's based on a children's book, but the way they designed and, you know, and casting Alec Baldwin back in 2017 was just genius. He's still the star attraction, and therefore it's disappointing that he's not used enough. I also would have liked to have seen a lot more of adult Ted and what had become of his life and not just Tim's. Uh, his, I'm mean, like, we can cut a lot of this, and I would like to see that instead. His prison scenes with these special needs babies at school is, are, are, are just top notch and some of the best, most inventive humor. His, the, at first, I didn't think it was good, but the creepy girl in the, in the class, the creepy uh, girl baby, um, that really became pretty brilliant. I thought that was great. Uh, that was um, that was great. I, I mean, that was a, a really good, that she, she could compete with uh, Alec Baldwin's boss baby. And speaking of school, the evil acorn school is probably the best thing that's introduced here overall. Wow, what a jaw-dropping educational facility. I wish that school, I wish that schools like that actually existed, minus the evil part, of course. It was just really well thought out. I was like, schools should borrow from this. So Boss Baby 2 family business certainly has its moments, but I think that the anim that the animated show spread out the world of Boss Baby so much that now they have too much story that they had to try and again cram into a single movie sequel. It's just, they really should, I mean, they really needed to pare this down and, and build stuff out. It's, 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 I mean, will it distract babies? Probably, but the first movie was so good, the sequel deserves to be more than just a babysitter. I mean, they could make a, a the, the, this movie is kind of like the things they're making fun of a little bit in the Boss Baby, Boss Baby 2. So Boss Baby 2 hits theaters and Peacock this Friday. I know people who are very excited about this movie, so I'm curious to see how it performs. And family films have done very well during the pandemic, and since not a lot of people have Peacock, maybe it won't hurt its theatrical box office too much. So I'm curious, share your thoughts down below. Have you watched the Boss Baby animated series? What kind of, what kind of, what kind of Boss Babies do you like? And are you planning to see this sequel? So share those thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.